Hi everybody, this is Chris from Team Millkeep and today we're going to be talking about the settings page and uh, setting up pilot training information on that settings page. So after you create an account, this is the initial page that you're going to be brought to. There's one additional line above this for your name and email address and username. But what we're going to start with is your default MDS and default duty position. And the purpose of these is anytime that you create a manual entry from this point forward, Whenever you create that entry, what's set in the default MDS and duty position is what's going to auto automatically populate for you. So let's uh, say, for instance, a C-17 pilot, the default MDS or the MDS code that you're going to see for a C-17 is C-017A in your harm record. So we'll put that in there and we'll say that I was a uh, instructor pilot. Now, anytime you go into the new create a manual entry section, that is what it's going to auto populate for you. So you don't have to manually type it in every single time. In pilot training information, there is two different phases. There's your phase two aircraft, either a T-37 or a T-6 typically, and then your phase three aircraft for the uh, more advanced stuff, T-1s, T-38s, 34s, and 44s. So where do I find this? On your harm record, there is no individual breakout of the sorties that you flew in pilot training. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. What you do typically have in the beginning of your harm folder is something called a summary of record training. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. So when I flew T-37s, they'll have a summary of record training. And you can see right here, there's an hours dual and an hours solo breakout for what I've actually flown. And there's an 88.5 and an 8.2. So if I go back into Millkeep, I'll put in the T-37, 88.5, 8.2 solo hours, nothing for other and nothing for night. And then going into my next phase three aircraft, which is T1s, they also give you a summary of record training, but it doesn't look uh, exactly the same, but it's pretty easy to flow through academic training record supplementary stuff. Get down into your flying training, and then you have your hours dual, 109.3, solo 0, 0.0, night 5.2, and other is 63.1. So I'll make sure I get T1 in there. 109.3, no solo, 63.1, and a 5.2 for night hours. Certifications. So this is really important for Millkeep and the system in general because what this section does is it's a double verification to make sure that it's not incorrectly crediting PIC time or SIC time on your civilian logbook. So for example, date certified as pilot, if I go back into my summary of record training, it will have a graduation date here, so you'll use that for the date you were certified as an actual pilot if you weren't already certified as a pilot before going to a military pilot training. So we'll say February 14th, 2005, I'll throw that in there. So if you were to manually create a sortie prior to this date, it's not going to give you PIC or SIC time because you weren't actually a pilot. It'll give you student time um, and credit dual time for you. Uh, similarly with date certified as aircraft commander, if I put a date in here, let's say I was certified around the 2008 time frame. So now if I have, you know, July 9th of 2008, um, anything that I input prior to that is not going to give me PIC time because I was never certified as an aircraft commander. The initial uh, thing that the system checks for is your duty position, so it will look for MP, IP, or above in order to give you that uh, time initially when it's going to break out things based on if it doesn't know if you were the aircraft commander or not. But anything prior to this, it definitely will not. Same thing for instructor pilot. If you try to credit yourself with uh, instructor time before this date, it's going to flag it and say that you can't. So other preferences. Um, the default for all flights, were you the aircraft commander? And this is built for people after they have done their initial upload and now they're doing manual entries on their own, or they have the premium service where you're just taking a picture of your 781 and sending it to us. You can say that I always want to make myself the aircraft commander. Um, and this is, you can edit this once you have the uh, sortie generated in the actual logbook, but this is just the default uh, for whenever you go to new and create a new manual entry, it will set your default as the aircraft commander. So it's giving you all PIC time. The next one is a sliding scale. And this is one of the biggest things that people look at when it comes to uh, converting time from military into this civilian time, because your individual flight record report, when it breaks out all of your individual flights, doesn't actually tell you if you were the 
aircraft commander or not. It'll give you a duty position for uh, MP, mission pilot, instructor pilot, evaluator, etc. But it won't actually say that you are the A coder that you signed for the jet. And especially for the mobility community, there are instances where multiple aircraft commanders can be on a plane at the same time. So what most people do is they will say, I'm going to choose 90% or 80% of all of the time that I've flown since aircraft certification. And I want you to count that as PIC or pilot in command time. So this is the section that allows you to do that. How Millkeep works is after we do an initial upload for you, you're going to see a column uh, on your logbook for pilot in command. And it's either going to say yes, no, or unknown. And everything that we upload for you based off of your harm record is going to default to the unknown category. You can go in and change any one of those sorties to yes, if you knew that you absolutely were the aircraft commander for that flight. And if so, then this, this uh, sliding scale doesn't apply. If you say yes, it's going to give you 100% PIC time for what you, what you flew on that sortie. This is uh, only for those where it says unknown in your pilot in command status. And then it will give you um, the percentage of not just your, it won't just do your total time because if you'll see below, there's a other section. Uh, some people want to include other time and some people don't. So if you do include other time right here and you say, I want 90% of that to go towards PIC, it's going to do 90% of primary plus secondary plus instructor plus evaluator plus other. If you take away the other time down below here, then it's only going to do uh, primary, secondary, instructor, and evaluator. It won't count the other time in that when it's doing the PIC calculation. So it doesn't it doesn't just take your total time and do a percentage. It's it's more accurate than that. So let's put it at 90% and we'll say yes, for example. And I'll go ahead and update everything that we just did. So you can see right here, this is what is generated as one bulk entry for all of your sorties from uh, pilot training because we don't have individual breakouts and you'll notice because it's a bulk entry we don't know the primary or secondary time it'll just have a total here for you and then uh, if you had any of the other extra times like nighttime or anything like that it will it will show as well so you can see there's 63.1 of other we knew that existed for the t1 and a total of 172.4 so let's go over really quick to the civilian logbook and you'll see the same thing the totals exist because you were solo time in the T-37 for 8.2, it will show a PIC of 8.2. Cross country is gonna show equivalent to um, the total hours that you flew. If you've flown over one hour on any given sortie, it's gonna give you cross country time for that. So you see, now we have seen that the pilot training uh, sorties from your setting page have populated inside of your military and civilian logbook. If we go over to the totals page, It'll show the same thing. So it'll have your T-37 and T-1 sorties in your military aircraft totals, 269.1, other time of 63.1. And if you scroll down to civilian aircraft totals, it breaks it out for you, 269.1 and 63.1. So that's a basic overview of the settings page and the preferences. We'll get into a couple of examples in a later tutorial for how the uh, conversions work in terms of the percentages and if you want to use other time or not. Um, but Hopefully this was helpful and look forward to getting records from you in the future.